Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And there are currently some accusations of potential nepotism within SA Rugby. An interesting report over the weekend. And once again, we are seeing provincial unions uh, vent their displeasure about SA Rugby, but not through the official channels and kind of sort of going to the media and talking about, you know, this is actually happening and, and causing a bit of a stir. There does seem to be a bit of a standoff between a lot of the unions and SA Rugby at the moment, which is not a good look for SA Rugby because, um, you know, we need all the unions, SA Rugby and all the various different shareholders of South African Rugby to be in alignment so that we are all working towards a common goal um, together. But that doesn't kind of seem to be the, the case. You know, we had a, 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 a story earlier this year which spoke about the sort of the four major unions not being happy with uh, the cost that, you know, it was bearing to to get Springbok games for this year, for example. And uh, lots of issues there where cheaters actually distanced themselves saying we are happy to pay for Springbok games because we can still make a large amount of... Um, of... Um, Uh, money from the actual the, the actual the actual game itself and um now he's got a bit of a different story and a bit of a bit of a different issue that some provincial unions are uh raising so before we talk about it please do smash the like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well um so basically what they've done is one of the uh, some of the unions have uh spoken to the media and apparently very upset that the company um, that has um, been appointed to organize the Springboks mid-year tests against Ireland in July are uh, actually run by the son of SA Rugby Chief Executive Rian Oberholzer, which off the bat looks like a really bad, or reads like a really uh, a bad thing and, and, and a bad move. And, and maybe, you know, as I say, coming from the, from the get-go, it doesn't sound uh, very, very uh, kosher. But it's not quite as simple as that. And I think to be fair to, to, to Rian Oberholzer, you know, um, can be understandably quite upset about the accusations if, if you look at sort of the the lead up to what this decision is. Um, so apparently one anonymous rugby boss at one local union said that this is nepotism at its worst. And, and apparently another one said it's a major conflict of, of uh, interest. However, SA Rugby has insisted that the appointment was made following a world rugby recommendation and based on a conflict management framework. And uh, the framework itself is designed, uh, so this is coming from SRAB, by the way, is designed to avoid potential conflicts and specifically includes independence committees while excluding the CEO, given the conflict of interest. Uh, and the reason that this conflict of interest and the reason that this has all sort of come together is that Rian Oberholzer himself established the company, um, which is um, been given the, 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 the contract, Access Management Service, which is AMS, abbreviated down to AMS. Uh, he established the company with uh, Sanjay Zunao, who was a uh, former SRA managing director back in 2009. And uh, he was the managing director. And uh, since then, they have grown and they've organized events such as the 2021 British and Irish Lions Series, um, as well as the South Africans uh, 2023 Rugby World Cup build, as well as various tests back in 2017 and 2018. Uh, back in 2017, uh, Oberholzer's son, Lawrence Oberholzer, was appointed as the CEO in 2017, as mentioned. And apparently his daughter is the company's strategy and growth manager, whilst his son's wife is the operations manager. So there's a lot of you know, family uh, within the business, which isn't normal, by the way. It's very, very normal for lots of, uh, of family-run businesses um, to have lots of different family members involved. Um, in 2022... Um, uh, he became the chief executive. Lord Oberholzer became the, uh, the chief executive. Um, because uh, at the time, Rian Oberholzer was still serving um, as the administrator of uh, uh, the, the West Province Rugby Union, um, but moved to SRB in 2023. Uh, he is no longer involved in the company and uh, has no shareholders. Uh, and apparently, when they approached him, um, he said the following: He said, "I didn't appoint AMS. Um, the company was a service provider. Sorry, before my appointment." Yeah, I have nothing more to do with the company. I'm not a shareholder and I don't benefit financially from it. It wouldn't be right or ethical to remain involved. I don't know where the complaints come from. And I, um, I, know, where the, sorry, I know where the complaints have come from. And I know they have their own agendas. Um, all the sort of the, the chat uh, to AMS itself, uh, they've all sort of diverted back to SA Rugby. Um, I think that this is something that's probably been a bit um, sort of blown out of proportion. Again, you know, this. It's one of those things, you know, we're talking about a company that's been involved in, the, in, in, in SA Rugby for a long time. 
And all of a sudden, somebody who had set the company up finds himself as the CEO of SC Rugby. But they've always been intertwined for that very reason. You know, you talk about a former, as I mentioned, a former SC Rugby manager um, in in uh, Sanchez Anayo, who was uh, part of the company. So basically, you know, you can just see sort of how it happens. You know, they see a gap in the market. They sit there saying, you know, they, 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 there's, there's a potential over here for a company that can um, help you know, organize these tours, organize these matches, for example, do the sort of the event management. Um, they then get contracts, for example, they work with SA Rugby, and uh, so the relationship begins, and then there's a bit of crossover where you suddenly you're involved in all these different sort of stakeholders and different unions, and all of a sudden, for example, Rian Olberholz, it becomes, you know, a, 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 and takes over sort of at Western Rugby to try and help them, does a very good job, now he gets an SA Rugby opportunity because of the success he's had. In his in his career at companies like AMS, for example, so it is a bit of a, of a sort of overlap. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I think you know this has been framed pretty poorly because it's not a case of they've never had a contract. He's become CEO all of a sudden. They've gotten the contract. You know they've always been involved, and, and he was involved at the time when they were involved. And uh, they've gone back to a company they've used in theory. You know you like to think in terms of checks and balances and a conflict of interest uh, uh, committee. You know he wasn't involved in 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 the process, which is probably likely the case. Um, so it, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because as I said, it doesn't look like a good look, but the more you dig into it, the more you think, well, it's not quite as simple as, as it seems. And at the end of the day, if they do the job very well and it's benefiting everybody, you know, the right company should get the right uh, the, the the option. A lot of people talk about the fact that apparently there was no tender process about it. But again, you know, if you're talking about somebody who a company you've been used before, you're not suddenly going to a brand new company or brand new a uh, bunch of people say, right, do the island series all of a sudden. You're going back to a tried and tested um, uh, organization which has done the job well before. So I think it's a little bit of a blown out portion. I, I think, you know, we've got bigger fish to fry, really. Um, but for me, what re this really sort of uh, uh, flags is the apparent uh, disconnect and and uh, the apparent friction between some of the provincial unions and SRA, which for me is probably more of a concern than whichever company they decide to use to help them um, organize and manage incoming tours but uh, let me know what you think uh do you think it's one of those things where maybe they should be cutting ties given the links or, or or what do you think let me know down in the comments below please do smash the like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well thank you very much for watching my name is steve and i'll chat to you soon